Seamless Tuesdays Live, brought to you by LGB Marine, the marine construction and services specialists. Battlers, we are back. Here we are again to start the Rugby League week with another banger episode of Teamless Tuesday. Tonight, we'll be taking a look ahead of our Round 6 clash against the Roosters in a Thursday night game back home at McDonald Jones Stadium. The Roosters coming into Newcastle with a few missing troops. Uh, and after losing a game, they'll be very disappointed in uh, against the Doggies last Friday, but the Knights also looking to go back to back for the first time this season. But look, plenty, plenty to discuss uh, on this week's episode. We'll take a look at our key matchups, our lock-it-ins. We'll be answering your burning questions. The Knighted Hotline has been running hot. So we'll be uh, taking a few calls from the Knighted Hotline. So kick back, battlers. Get comfy as we take a look at the Adam O'Brien's and outs of round six. Let's go. Welcome to the Knighted Podcast with your hosts, Lincoln Ison and Sean Lazenby. Sean Mendez, how we doing, brother? Good, mate. It's changing every week, is it? Keeping it fresh, mate. Keep it love fresh. it. Love it. How you been, yeah. mate? Good, man. Good. Oh, I've um, been doing a bit of night shift, so yes, that's why what? I thought I'd ask. Body clock's a little bit, bit a bit messed up at the moment, so I'm mm. running high on caffeine. But um, no, nah, I'm uh, my tires are pumped up. Uh, it's always great, mate. The, the start of the rugby league week, yep. is doesn't get any better, does it? It doesn't. It doesn't. One of my favorite favorite days of the week, Tuesday, just because of this. Just because of this. Well, just look, because of this. First things first, mate. Joey, he's got a stalker. He's been apprehended. Mm. He's got right. a stalker. So. 27-year-old die-hard rooster supporter, Blake Moses. Rooster supporter. Rooster supporter, of all things. Uh, apparently first met Joey in a – Joey was out for a, a surf at Bronte. Followed him into the water, <laughs> staring at him for days. And then the next day, Joey's out for a coffee somewhere. And he's this Blake's <laughs> found him again. He's just stared at him. Mm. Um, but, yeah, appeared in court, granted bail. However, breached bail conditions. He's given I, – I, I don't understand how this happens. He's given the cops a phony address. So because he's breached his bail conditions – 123 in, Fake Street, hey? Yeah, 123 mm. Joey Avenue. And um, they've gone, oh, this this address doesn't exist. How how does that happen for one? But anyways, yep. um, he's currently remanded in custody, undergoing a mental health assessment for firstly being a diehard Rooster supporter, and then mm. we're going to get to the bottom of this Joey John stuff. So, right. uh, yeah, interesting. Very interesting. At first, I mm. thought you were going to say it was um, old mate Carlo from the, the trying to erect the statue of Andrew Johns. How's that going? Have you heard anything about that or what? Nothing, brother. Nothing. You'd, know, you'd know more than me, mate. Nah, uh, no, no idea. No idea. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, very, yeah, a Roosters supporter. Uh, maybe oh, didn't get Joey. the memo. Yeah, we and, and we have, what a bizarre coincidence that we take on the Roosters, Roosters. this week. Mm. Maybe he's a bit of a sleeper agent. Maybe he's trying to rustle so. a few feathers. You know, Trent Robertson's got these wackos out there trying to, I don't know, mm. maybe just trying to unsettle us a little bit. He's one of the very few Roosters supporters then, by the sounds of it. Yeah, they got one, so there's only four left in the wild. So, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but look. Enough of that. Oh, actually, no, before I dive any further, too, okay. I was going to ask, mm-hmm. got it in the mail today. I completely forgot about this. Battlers, did, did anyone get their upgraded um, NRLW membership and you get the little back to back pin? Did you end up getting one Why? of these? No. Didn't get it? 
No, and good old Australia Post probably lost it somewhere. Yeah, mine came today. I was like, oh, I completely forgot about this. Pretty cool little badge, but uh, yeah, got my little upgraded membership card and stuff. So yeah, nice. Yeah, for all the battlers, comment away if you got yours too. But anyways, all right, moving right along. What we're all here to talk about, guys, our upcoming round six clash up against the Roosters back home at McDonald Jones Stadium this Thursday, April 11th, kicking off at 7.50 p.m. And that goes for all of us. I don't have to try and work out fucking time differences. <laughs> for all of us. We're all aligned. We're all aligned. No more that posting way. screenshots with the wrong time. Oh, the Eastern mm. Seaboard is all aligned. Hallelujah. Um, Happy days. So, yeah, back home at McDonald Jones for a Thursday night game. Um, what else have we got, mate? Moving right along, uh, sports bet actually have us as a dollar sixty three favorite. The Roosters coming in uh, at two dollars twenty seven, which probably isn't any surprise given some of the the outs they currently have. Mm. Uh, Knights coming in, however, on a win. Uh, Roosters uh, after a, a big loss to the um, well, not a big loss, but they'll be disappointed. The loss it was a bloody hectic game. Oh, it was, um, it was a weird game. It was a very weird, weird game. Um, yeah, send off HIAs had bloody everything. Entertaining yeah. game of footy. Um, if you go if you like go that game and then our game, chalk and cheese. Very yeah. different different games, mate. Just the the quality of rugby league at the moment. There's been so many so many entertaining games. Even the Thursday night game, the Broncos Storm one prior to this. Mm. Mate, we just had back to back to back. It was just fucking excellent. Um, but yeah, the Knights coming in uh, on twelfth position. The Roosters um, on tenth. Only only the uh, four and against really separating the two, both with two wins thus far this season. What else have we got here? Um, taking a look at some uh, statistics thus far in the NRL competition. The Knights still first, making eighteen hundred and twenty-two tackles. Jeez, a lot of. Uh, a lot of dick transplants going on in Newey. A lot, lot of tackling in Newey. Mm. Boy, oh boy. Um, what else we got here? What sort of standing out? I've got here uh, most runs. For, well, not most, sorry. Fourth in the competition with 980 for the Knights. Uh, looking across to the Roosters. Third in offloads. Third in missed tackles. I like that. And third in errors. Um, but also second in tackle breaks. So, geez, they're, they're one into the other. Mm. They really have been a bit of a disappointing... I think a lot of people overestimated the Roosters. Been, uh, yeah, I yeah. did. Yeah. Anyways. I did. I definitely did. Any other stats jump out at you there? Uh, Roosters actually second most amount of tries. Is that right? 22 tries. Yeah, they absolutely pumped the uh, Rabbitohs, didn't they? Yeah. So they that sort of, yeah, inflates it a little bit. Um, am I missing something? Is there something you're seeing that I'm not? No, no, I'm just I'm just wondering when you want me to move on from this because yeah. I have something after this. Oh, it's going to be fucking bad news, isn't it? I'm a scat man. Look, this this week's um, I've split it up into positive and negative. There is actually some positive stats. I'm going to start with the positives. Let's go for it. Um, you can obviously Mitch see Mitch Pierce on the right hand side of your screen there, kissing kissing the old Knights emblem. Knights last win in Newcastle over the Roosters was in round eleven, two thousand and nineteen. Knights thirty eight, Roosters twelve. Was that, that, was that, that game? game? Yep, that is wow. our last. That's our last win at home over the Roosters. On the ten occasions that the Knights have beaten the Roosters at home, I'll get to that in a minute. On the ten occasions that the Knights have beaten the Roosters at home, only once have the Roosters scored more than twelve points. Roosters scoring 16 in 1990. So every time we've beaten the Roosters at home, I can tell you we've beaten them 38 to 12, 16 to 12, 18 to 10. Um, there's been a lot of games where when we win, they don't score many points. So that's something good to keep in the back of your mind. So when we win, we usually win pretty big against would the that, Roosters would, at would home. That, was that, would it be wrong to say that most times we beat them because they're playing poorly? Potentially. We're, mm, well, we're playing mm. that well that we're not allowed. Yeah, let's run with that. We're, we're running that well. We don't want to go down the negative path yet. I do remember that in 2019 because that was their second. They went on the win. That was their second one. Eh? Yeah, they won in 18. Then this is the 19 run they went on. Yeah. This was the biggest score put on them that year. That 38 points yeah, right. was the most amount of points we put on them. So I remember hanging. I thought that was pretty good. 
For yeah. a team to nearly get 40 against, they were fu- obviously fucking elite. They went back to back, but. I remember after this game, and obviously I was all over Facebook saying how good the Knights are, and one of my mates is a staunch Roosters supporter, and he was just absolutely giving it to me, saying, you know, it's going to change next week. The Roosters are going to win the comp, blah, blah, blah. He obviously had the last laugh in in that one, but I got to give it to him for one game, so that was exciting. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the negatives. Everyone knows they're coming. Here they come. Whenever. There we go. The Knights have won 10 from 29 games at home against the Roosters, 10 wins, 17 losses, and two draws, 34.5% win rate. Well, that's better than the Dragons, mate. It is. It is better than the Dragons. Mm. The Knights have won four from the last 18 games against the Roosters at home, winning in 2019, 2014, and 2001. So that was... That's that's a long time ago, going back there. Before 2001, the Knights won six, lost three, two draws. So obviously we did better before 2001 against the Roosters at home. Knights have played 60 game against the Roosters, winning 21 with a 35% win rate. So it's pretty much the same no matter where we play the Roosters. We only have about a 35% chance of beating them. Not 35% chance of beating them, 35% win rate in history. So... Mate, that's our that's my negative stats for the for for and this if, week. I remember rightly when we were towards in the last year when we were doing stats on finals, wasn't mm. it the Roosters? Yes, were the one team that always yep. managed to beat us in finals, right? We, we we've Absolutely. yet to beat them in the finals, have we? Correct. Mm. Uh, no, we beat them at home in the finals in two thousand and one. That's who we beat in two thousand and one in the home right home final. We beat them forty to six. In 2001. We avenged the 2000 prelim. Right, right. Yes, we did. Okay. Yeah. Do you reckon this game should be called the Mitch Pierce Cup? We can call it that. Why not? Mm, let's coin it the Mitch Pierce Cup. Atlas. Unless you can come up with a better name. I'm going to run with the Mitch Pierce. Mitch, not Mitch Pierce. Mitch <laughs> Pierce Cup. We can put Pierce in the cup. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Oh, Piss Cup. What, was, <laughs> what movie was it? Did you have to watch that in school? What was it? Come on, Battlers, help me out. What was Piss Cup? There was a there was a new, um, doing a horrible South African accent, but there was piss cup. Um, what was oh. it? Um, I used to have to watch it all the time in school. Um, shit, what was it? What's the plot um, of the movie, mate? I can't even remember it. That was the last time I saw it. It was like one of those ones that they make you watch in English or history or something. Right. Every time you know the school term ends is about to end. Power of one. There you go, Christopher Power Wilson. Thanks, one. buddy. Power Who the hell's of one, that? mate. I don't know, but there's this guy, and they call him Piss Cup. All I remember is running around calling kids at school Piss Cook. I don't know. It's weird. I was That's a weird so kid. Still weird. a weird kid. Anyway, there's the ladder for you, mate. Ah, uh, yeah. Looking at the ladder, uh, Battlers. Yeah, Knight, Knight, Knights currently sitting at twelfth with a negative. Three point differential, not mm. peripheral. Um, not peripheral. I've been practicing battles. I've been practicing. <laughs> so, look, not a lot really separating um, either club. But yeah, Roosters, um, they'd be disappointed. Trent mm. Robson and Co would be very disappointed because they, I yeah, pretty much think. I'm going to grab my draw here. Sorry, mate. You keep going. Um, I think a lot of, well, a lot of people would have had them as um, very much premiership contenders after a pretty. Pretty disappointing season last year. They're always, you know, let's face it, unfortunately, they're always going to be a, a heavyweight club. Yeah, in the NRL, you know, got an endless fucking pit of money they can throw at players. It seems, um, ta- always seem to have a talented ros- roster across the board. So, mm. Mm. yeah, mate, I've been doing some reflecting today while I was getting my my stats, and everything, my stats and everything ready for today's show. I I was doing a bit of reflection upon the five rounds that we've had because I didn't want to get to the halfway mark where we're going to do our, you know, mid-season review and grade the spine and grade the coach and all that that we usually do like we did last year where we graded it. Then we went on the run and we just look like the biggest dickheads ever because mm. <laughs> we gave we gave everyone like four out of ten and all this shit and then we went on that run. Um, or maybe we were the turning point. Maybe we were the kick up the ass everyone needed. I don't know. I think so. But anyway, I thought I'm not going to let it get to that stage where I try to look at the season a little bit differently. 
So I've, I've, I've really sat down and had a look at our five rounds and something you were saying to me, well, to everyone on this show a couple of weeks ago, really stood out to me that we lost to the Raiders, right? Where are they sitting? They're sitting in fifth. We lost to the Cowboys. They're sitting in second. Rightfully, they should be in first. We beat the Storm. We're the only team this year to beat the Storm. We lost to the Warriors. They're sitting in six. And then we beat the Dragons. So the teams that we've lost to are all inside the top six at the moment. Mm. So I'm going to take that as not that bad. I'm going to to change whatever, you know, sitting there before saying, oh, we we haven't started this year off very well. I'm going to change that tune now. I'm not going to let... It gets a halfway point of the season before yeah. I go, you know what? The start's not that bad. And each of those games, apart from the Raiders one, you would say we were in it. Like particularly that fucking having your, your heart ripped out of your ass in that in Tansville. Mm. Like we were yes. obviously yeah, going all the way to go on point on that yeah. one. Um <laughs> yeah, what eight eight points to the Warriors. Um, or what'd you say the other game was? Uh, uh, Warriors, Raiders, Cowboys. We beat the beat the storm. Storm. So, yeah. and where, the, where are they sitting? Storm. Third. Third. So, we're yeah, the only, we're the only team this year to have beaten the storm. Yeah. So, when you put it like that, you're losing. What? What was the? What was the Raiders' final score again? That was thirteen plus. That was pretty bad. It was thirteen. That plus. was a bit of a write off. Maybe you can just put that down to just hopefully some rust. Yeah. But um, yeah, the worst defeat. What by eight? Eight points? Would that be right? Eight points has been our biggest, apart from the Raiders game, to the hands of the Warriors. Yes. Yeah. So Over there, isn't that bad? Yeah. And like, like you said as well, the Cowboys up there, which were notoriously bad at Townsville. The Warriors over there were notoriously bad at uh, in New Zealand. So mate, it's not that bad. Yeah, if, when you put it that if way. We, if we'd beaten the, the Raiders, I oh, this season definitely would have been a pass mark so far. Yeah. That's the only one that I really wish we'd got. Well, you take take marks. take the Raiders game out of it. Yeah. And you go, well, it's not too bad. No, exactly. It's not, it's not, it's not too bad. Take that so, out of it and it's two from four. There's a, Put it this way. There's, there's some other teams, including the Roosters, who should be – their expectations were far higher. Like, yeah. look at, like at the Rabbitohs there, the Eels. I know the Eels are a lot – Lost Mitch Moses snap, but let's you know everyone's got to deal with injuries. So um, yeah, and even the Broncos, bro. Broncos are only it's only as a for and against. They've only scored five more points, as, and you know we we bag another try somewhere. Yeah, uh, we're we're higher than them, so we're in good company. So, yes, yeah, three of our three of our worst away trips are yet to come. We got the win on one of the away trips last year when we went down to Canberra. Um, that's one where we don't really do well. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how we bounce back against Canberra down there. Then we've got Melbourne in Melbourne as well. That that uh, usually doesn't go our way. And then obviously up in up in Suncorp. Um, but we've got the Dolphins up there, don't we? We don't play the Broncos at no. Suncorp this year, do we? So luckily for us, that Suncorp game is, you know, and Magic Round is against the Titans and the Titans and Dolphins, so oh, you God, can't even – I wouldn't even really call that a Suncorp trip. Yeah, well, I'm calling it a Suncorp trip. I cannot wait to get in there. So uh, yep. stay tuned, Battlers. I'll let you know my movements. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll be somewhere along Caxton Street before the game. It'd be great to have a, a, some beers with you guys, so stay yeah. tuned. I'll let you know what my movements are there. But, yeah. Great reflection, mate. It's always good to do a bit of personal reflection or on your rugby league team. Mate, so. I just – yeah, I just – because I was feeling a little down, I suppose, the two losses in a row, and I have I've I was doing the early stats early on where, like I said, it was our fifth worst start to the year and it was our fourth worst start to the year is, you know, points scored. And I'm like, no, I can't get into this sort of rut in round four. Like, it's not happening. So I had to force myself out of it. I, I, I dug myself out of a hole and... Smooth sailing from here, mate. Promise. It's 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 a um it's a slippery slope being a stats man because oh, I can quite is. easily see where you can go down the rabbit hole. It and, is. Uh, it's like yeah. an, another stat that I've I've got here that 
it's it's not a pretty spreadsheet or anything. Battlers the way we are. Or oh, that's just a whole lot of numbers, right? Probably makes no sense to you, but I've gone through and I can tell you, you know, the best day that we play on, the best time slots that we play on, uh, our worst time slots, um, home and away. I, I've I've decided to even go that far as, you know, because obviously we don't play well on a Thursday night. This game coming up is a Thursday night at home, which we've lost four in a row. So hopefully we're going to rectify that, and this will be our first. Thursday night win at home but I was like we can't have any other bad ones like that which we don't we don't on Fridays we win 42.6% of the time Saturdays 59.8 Sundays 59.2 and the good old Mondays we won 68.4% of the time so I'm not going to come down there later in the year and come visit and there's just going to be all these oh 100% just drawings and numbers and sketches all over your walls and i'm just gonna go what you know i was gonna say um um it's always sunny in philadelphia where old mates yeah like he's just standing there going crazy it's more like a, a padded cell i'd say it's more like a padded cell where it's just got scratchings everywhere of yeah that that's what my house pretty much looks yeah, like. Yeah, just literally drawing on everything you can get your hands the, on. The white walls have just all been scratched with like a mm. you know like a screw or a nail or something with with stats in it. The dog's got mm. tally marks texted on its head or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not very good, mate. Very good when you put it that way. So maybe the battlers will take a bit of you know whether they're tuning in now or or listening to the podcast, they'll be going, yeah. Then you mm. put it that way, Sean. Yeah, very good. Well, let's take a. Big old deep dive into this week's team list and our opposition, starting off with the spine. Mr. Dally M, top of the Dally M's with 17 mm. votes. Is votes that surprising for you? Points. Mate, um, yeah, I, points. Um, yeah, like I don't take anything away from this Dally M here. I fucking love walking into the bar and seeing that each and every day. Um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Across the board, I think they need to do look at some of the Dalian points because, yep. yeah, yeah, they, they get a bit funky. But anyways, um, Caelan Ponga, captain at fullback, Jack Cogger and Jackson Hastings will remain in the halves with Jaden Bradley also staying as the starting hooker. Joey Manu will shift back to fullback after Viliami kick out, just absolutely bulldozed James Tedesco. My God. Um, Connor Watson coming in also for um, Sam Walker, also with a HIA. So uh, he comes from the bench utility role. He's been promoted to start in six uh, with Luke Carey shifting into the halfback position and Brandon Smith in the hooker position for the Roosters. Moving right along, shall we? What we oh, we're not going to... Not going to dive too deep in. Oh yeah, of course. So, I'm sorry, Battlers. I'm still out of form. Let's, you're, yeah. you're still we're into the to... old the old system I where am, we smash am, through the team list and then then work our way backwards again. Well, look when we when we we were trying to come up with our key matches and everything this week, and it was so hard because you know with uh you know especially with James Tedesco and and Sam Walker, two you know integral parts of their spine ruled out. We didn't know who was shuffling where. Um, Sandor, Sandor Smith, um, the young the young half the Roosters do have, he's still injured. So Connor Watson gets the gets the nod there. Um, yeah, it's going to be. You, mm. I was just going to say, I'll tell you what, I, we weren't the only ones that were, you know, scratching our head trying to come up with a key matchup this week. I don't know if anyone else, including yourself, Lincoln. Oh, here comes oh, the coffee. No, it's a chai oat latte. Thank you very oh, much. Nice. I cinnamon. I love a good old chai chai latte. Cinnamon on top. Thanks. Oh, love. Gonna make me drool. Anyway, um, talk. You got a chai latte, and we're talking about the roosters. That's kind of a bit, <laughs> bit ironic. Oh my god. Yeah. Any, the irony. Anyway, the irony. Um, did anyone else manage to notice that the NRL website and app and everything crashed this afternoon? Yes. Yes, we were was, having dinner, and I'm trying to open the goddamn app up, and it wouldn't do anything. Yeah, yes. good. I'm glad I wasn't the only one because I was trying to get all these graphics and shit together for for the show, right? Because four o'clock comes, and we I pump out the the team list that goes out on our sh- socials, and luckily it was okay then. And then I've gone to go back into it immediately to start 
getting all this stuff together and it just wouldn't load. Like nothing was working. I'm resetting my internet. I'm literally ripping hair out because I'm, you know, rushing to get shit ready for the podcast. And I was like, I wonder if this is happening for anyone else. It went on for about 50 minutes. About 50 minutes it was down for. And I remember when I was going through the team list, when I got our team list for the four o'clock um, announcement, and Teddy and Walker and all that was still on the Roosters team. And I didn't think anything of it, like when I was I was too worried about our team list. And then when I've it's finally let me back in, that's when I've noticed Connor at six and mm. I'm like, oh shit. So I reckon like their their intern or whatever's went, all right, oh, here's the team list and just dumped a team list. And like not realizing that half the Roosters squad changed and Pulled the plug on the uh, the on the app. It's like they've just gone shit. We got that much shit to sort out. Just rip the rip the cords out of the server or something. Who knows? But shut it down, mate. It was frustrating. I tell you. But yeah, it's going to be a um, a big ask for this. I, I don't know how they're going to go. Um, this spine. It's, it's you know, look. They, they are they are talented. Let's you know. Let's not get this twisted. Mm. But, um, geez, a lot of chopping and changing for the Roosters. Certainly not ideal. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. this is like last year. This happened last year, remember? We played a team, a Roosters team that we were certain we were going to beat, and I'm sure it was at home. Yes, and it was the same with the Panthers. The Panthers had like fucking eight. Yeah, that was the Christian Panthers. Welsh thing. Yeah. So yeah, that was – yeah. So we were meant to beat a rooster side last year that were was down on numbers and they got us, got mm. us at home. So, but e- even when we look at this, there's every chance still that there is some reshuffling. You yes, know, don't be at all surprised if you see Joey Manu shift to five eight, still a back to fullback. So this is what we got in front of us at the moment. But come kick off or even throughout the game, let's be honest. Yeah. You know, um, the game script might force them to change some things. So. Gonna be, it's, it's a hard team list to sort of dissect this one, but uh, yeah, but exactly. Because that's see, yeah, you go. I was gonna say on the flip side, though, however, for us, great to see completely unchanged. I think we can all agree at yes. this point in time that what we're seeing on the screen at the moment with KP, Cogger, Jacko, and Braley is, is, the, is the best recipe for success for the Knights, right? Yeah, absolutely. And if you look at their spine, their spine's still bloody strong. It's still a good spine, um, apart from Connor. But they kind of just have to almost say to him, "Mate, you can just run if you want. Like, don't don't try and do anything too flash. Just just have a running game." Um, Has Connor never... Watson played played against us yet since he's left? I don't think so. Because that would have been a pretty big thing, right, Connor? Yes. Yeah, so so this might be the first time he's played. Comment away if you know about it, because he obviously has had a horror injury run since he left. Yeah, because he didn't, he didn't play in that home game last year. He was one of the players out because he had a he was out for most of last year, wasn't he? Yeah, and Connor? even if he was, I don't know how he would have. Yeah. Um. Yeah, well, some of the battlers say no. So yeah, this could be the big um, KP Connor Watson reunion. Mm. Oh, hang on, no, Lockie said he played round nine in twenty twenty two when he ups. When we upset them at the at the SCG, oh, that was that bloody Adam Adam Clune and Clifford beat him. Oh, was that the round Remember one? We were all going, yes, Clifford and yeah. Clune, we're going to bloody go on and win the comp, and then just yeah, went to shit. Yeah, yeah. righto. Okay, there you go. Thanks, Lucky. Yeah, yeah. Well done. But yeah. All right. Um, not much really more to say, is there? Like again, no, nah, not really. Because the there's every chance there's going to be some chopping and changing. So let's yeah. take a look at the uh, the outside. Backs, uh, we have Tommy Jenkins keeps his spot. Comment away what you think on that. I think this is probably the one selection a lot of people are like, oh, let mm. me know if, if you weren't happy with uh, Tommy Jenkins. Start commenting away who you would would have rather. Don't say Greggy Marzu because we'll get there, but if there was a healthier player you would like to have seen, a Fletcher Sharp or Davey Armstrong or something like that, let us know. Um, Bradman Best, Dane Gagai, and Inari Tuwala, the Express, Daniel Tupo, Michael Jennings. Joseph mm. Suli'i and um, Fetalunga Junior Ponga. Now, is this Jennings, the game that is meant to be his 300th? Yeah. So, um, 
the NRL is not recognising Michael Jennings for his 300th game. Uh, nothing to do so with his three-year drug suspension for taking performance energy drugs, which, by the way, three... I can't believe that was three years. That's crazy. Yeah, right. So it doesn't seem like quick. Though. It mm. did go quick. Um, more so to do, though, with a civil case involving his ex-wife. Yeah. So there's sort of funky shit going on there at the moment. Uh, so the NRL sort of... And I, you know what? I, I don't know how you battlers feel. I'm more than happy with that. You know, if you, you know, yes, don't yep. fuck up, and this shit won't happen. But anyways, yep. um, Michael Jennings, mate. Here, I've got, I've got, I did a little, I did a little bit of research for once. Um, Michael Jennings debuted right 2007. Okay, 35 years old, Michael Jennings. You want to hear the team list that he first, the first game he ever played against the Knights, right? This is the team list. He first played the Knights uh, round 23, 2007. Kurt Gidley, James McManus, Brad Ty. He was marked up against George Carmont. Oh, Georgie. Uh, Cooper Vuna, Chris Bailey and Luke Walsh in the halves. Jesse Royal, Michael Young, Steve Simpson as captain. Zeb Taya, Daniel Abraham, Regan Tanner in the bench with Corey Patterson, Mitchell Sargent. Remember Mitchell Sargent coming down from um, Cowboys? Mm. Um, Adam Walno and Riley Brown. With Brian Smith. Yeah, man, man. That's a long fucking time ago. There you go. So um very mate, different squad side now. Mate, it was mm. so funny. Um, dad sent me a message with people commenting on seeing Michael Jennings out in the field, and you could just see the gray hairs and someone said look like he'd been plastering. <laughs> <laughs> I, was getting... about to, I was about to say, even look at the photo there on screen and it's Yeah, like, bro. Mate, there's some there's some silver silvers in that uh in that beard. Do you know who he reminds me of? That bloody dude from um, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh like, yeah, is it the old sergeant dude or whatever he is. Yep, the old captain. Yeah, Rain yeah, Holt. captain, captain. Yep. Give me those vibes. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, the big matchup in this. Um, do you think we see a shift from Anari to try and cover Daniel Tupo? Because let's be honest, Daniel Tupo <laughs> oh. up against Tom Jenkins. I am not fucking loving that at all. What would be an Ari against Den Tupo? Is it? Yeah. Right. And Jenkins up against, uh, how do you say his name? Because oh, la- I swear later in the game, they shifted Tupo to the other edge. But I guess oh, they had Dom out and all sorts of shit. But, uh, well, geez, speaking of Dom, bro, uh, Dominic Young obviously pleading guilty to a careless high tackle on Blake Taff. Horrible tackle has gone completely wrong. Mm. On top of that, did you know Dominic Young has scored the second worst fantasy score of all time with a really? minus, minus 15 he got? <laughs> so there you Lovely. go. There you go. Um, so, yeah, obviously, again, who was another, the worst? Another, do you know? Oh, I did see that. I think it was um, Nathan Brown. I think I, had a, I saw some. I think it was Random Stats guy put out a post. I think it was Nathan Brown. Yeah. Common right. someone, else, someone else would have seen it. But, anyways, uh, again, more reshuffling back here. Dominic Young, mate, he he was having an absolute Barry Crocker. He was just missing tackles. He was he was not having a good game. Mm. Um, and geez, mate, like, that tackle that tackle that he got uh, sent off for that was hundred percent just frustration that he couldn't make a tackle all game. And he's came old enough oh, out of the line and just threw mate, him around. Kick out made him look silly. Yeah, just absolutely. Big. But yeah, like Trent Robson, I understand a coach is always going to go on the bat for their players, but to say that wasn't a send off, like, mate, that mm. is a send off every day of the week. Yeah. Like, oh my God. But, anyways, um, so look, obviously a loss for the Roosters. So uh, more reshuffling. One of the one of the three starting players uh that is ruled out for them. Um, so Michael Jennings uh finding that spot because he must have been 18th man, eh? After after some yeah, HIs. I'm cool. pretty sure he was the 18th man that got promoted up. So, yeah, he'd have to be the oldest bloke in the league now, right? They must have a few. Daniel Tupo would be getting on and Jared Worry Hargreaves. They must have three of the most oldest players in the comp, right? And Corey Oates is playing this week for the Broncos, isn't he? How old would he be? Yeah. Cherry Evans can... would be getting up there too. But yeah, But, yeah, surely those those three would be, fuck, top 10 easily. Mm. Um. But yeah, no change here. Tommy Jenkins. Um, sorry, I, did, I didn't get a chance to see any of the. Uh, what do we see here? Adrian Singer, Fletcher Sharp in for Tommy Jenkins. Yeah, that would have been mine as well. Just Greggy's obviously like he's 
we'll get to it later, but he's on the extended bench at the moment. Um, so he's probably really good for next week. So I would have just given um given old Fletcher Sharp a go. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. Mm. Yeah, the I'm, smartest option. Yeah, I wouldn't have mind. Yeah. He's killing it in cup. He's yeah, easily yeah. our best cup player. He hasn't uh, oh Mark saying Corey Oates isn't even 30 yet, mate. There you go. No kidding. It's funny how you get some players like that. You swear they've been around forever, and you look at them going, Jesus, they're not even like 30 yet. Crazy. He looks like he's about 33. Mm. And yeah. everyone keeps talking about it. He's busted and too old. Mm. But, yeah, so, um, yeah, look. She's looking at it, 29. Jesus. There you go. Um, so, look, yeah, th- clearly the weak link in the back line, Tommy Jenkins. Boy, oh, boy, I hope he's uh, – I hope he's been practicing these kick, like catching all that stuff, mate. Because I guarantee you, Trent Robertson, if there's gonna if they're gonna kick to an edge, it's gonna mm. be his every day. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the blame for him being horrible so far for us under the high ball. I remember seeing vision of him at training, and I think it was while they were up at Tamworth, and they were doing um, flips into the pool from the diving board. And yeah, Tommy right. Jenkins was getting so much air and they were obviously catching the ball off off the diving board and stuff. And I was just sitting there watching it going, I can't wait to see what he can do actually on a football field. So you based and your analysis on what he did on a diving board? I Well, not just the diving board, obviously oh, the training <laughs> training paddock as well. Okay. okay. Yeah. Righto. Um, yeah, between what they were doing on the field in Tamworth and in the pool, I was like, Tommy Jenkins is going to be great under the high ball on – Obviously, I've jinxed him because great is not the word I would use to. No. Um, yeah. And clearly, he isn't quite big enough yet. Like, he's not compared to like Greg Marza, who's just, an, as we know, is just a tackle breaking machine. I think yeah, it's become same. pretty apparent. He's, he's just, the physicality isn't quite there yet with Tom Jenkins. Um, but yeah, look, he is still a young player. He's, he's still young. He's only played a handful of games. So he's going to yeah, improve. He'll get there. But, um, yeah, I, I hope this is a, a game we get to see more from Braddy. Yes. Not that he's played bad. Um, you know, he's done his job. And I guess a, a couple of the tries that were scored last week were on the back of, you know, a lot of the defenders having eyes on Brad Bradman, which, you know, enabled a bit of space for a pass or, um, you know, the winger coming in the jam in on, on Bradman best. So I'm not saying he's, he's been playing poorly at all, but – yeah. Be nice to see him, uh, I don't know, get some early ball, break some tackles, you know, back a try himself. Because he actually, what have we got here? Bradman's bet. He's, uh, Brady scored nine tries in his past 11 games at McDonald Jones. So he's overdue. He's overdue. Mm. So let's hope uh, Let's hope he, he can find a try. He hasn't, this is the one, right? he hasn't scored one since Fiji, mate. So he's well overdue, Brady. So let's Oof. get him in there. So, yeah. But yeah, all right, moving right along, shall we? What do we got next, mate? The into, the, into the forward pack. In the forwards. Let's dive right into the forwards, shall we? With Jacob Saifidi, Leo Thompson, Dylan Lucas and Kai Pierce paul on the edges and Adam Elliott in the lock position. Moving along to the Roosters, we had Jared Waria Hargreaves, Lil, Lindsay Collins up front with Nat Butcher and Angus Crichton on the edge and Victor the Inflictor Radley in the lock position. So... I guess looking at the two forward packs on paper, mm-hmm. um, yeah, geez, they, they look fucking good. The Roosters, mate, their forward pack still insanely elite. good, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty elite. Um, and I think if they if they're any chance of trying to beat us, it's going to be built on the back of their forwards. Yeah, taking it to ours. So to me, this is where the game is going to be won or lost. In the forwards, if, in the forwards, if if the Roosters just manhandle, you know, the Saps and and Leo, because um, let's be honest, Jad Warrior Hargreaves, one of the he's just an out and out enforcer. He is yeah. he is at the moment the NRL enforcer, the alpha dog of the pack. <laughs> Lindsay Collins, no slash two, another representative level prop forward. Um, they got their work cut out for them, mate. They really got the cut of work cut out. Hopefully, 
we saw the standard that was set last week against the Dragons. Got to build on that. Have to yeah. build on that. The physicality's got to be there. You know, we have a little bit of a tendency to have a couple of little lapses in defense. Uh, can't have that shit. The Roosters are too talented. Even with yep. these outs, they're too talented, man. They'll fucking pick you apart. Can't give them too much. Um, but yeah, big, big test for our boys, hey? Absolutely. Massive test. I've been watching um, Dragon Ball Z lately, a lot of Dragon Ball Z lately. And um, there's a guy in, I don't know if anyone watching is a fan of Dragon Ball Z, but there's a guy in the Ginyu Force that is a spinning image of Lindsay Collins. I was watching it the other day. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, holy shit, it is Lindsay Collins. It's because I think Dragon Ball Z is like from 1989. Like it's fairly old. Um, obvious, obviously, they haven't, you know, taken inspiration from him, but man, they are spitting image, these two. Is that that Ray Coom guy? Yes. You know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> apart, yes. from, apart from the red hair. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Spitting image, and he even talks with a real dopey yeah. talky. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just. He's just Lindsay Collins all over. Toddy's vibing with it too, mate. Yeah, that's him. Right, yeah, that's him. I was just, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, holy shit, it is Lindsay Collins. Yeah, there you go. Um, Sorry, mate. I was, uh, I was, I was googling. No, no, you're, you're the new right. squad to try and find find what he looked like. But yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and um, yeah, even even we'll get to him later on the bench also. But um, May coming off the bench too. Um, I only played twenty minutes last week, so I'm I'm getting. I'm assuming he's going to have a much bigger role uh, coming into this game. But absolutely, for me, this is, you know, you can say the, the you know, the chop and change, the roosters and the halves, and that, they're too talented. They, they, they'll find a way. They're always a star-studded lineup. Yeah. If the big boys don't roll up their sleeves, um, yeah. And these are one of these games, you said, we, we've fallen victim so many times where we go, we can do this. We, can, yeah. we should beat them. We should beat them. You know, they've... They got Teddy out. They got Dom out. They got Walker out. No problem. We got this. So the big boys and mill have to start. Have to start good. Go, we nail the first twenty minutes. I'll, I'll be able to tell very fucking quickly if we have any chance in the first twenty minutes. I think mm. just from seeing the big boys alone. Yeah, exactly. Because wasn't it last year? It was um, that Hutchins order over his name was playing seven and tore us apart. Hutchins, yeah, yep, yeah, would have been because uh. Because Luke Luke Keary came off, he got a got knocked out early again. And we we're all sitting there going, "Oh, again!" Because that happened last time he was in, yeah. in Newcastle. And then is it Hutchins or Hutchinson or something like that? Um, Drew Hutchins. Hutchins. Yes, Drew. Yeah. It's definitely Drew. He came on and just tore us apart. So, mate, you can't take you can't take any of the Roosters players lightly. They're like Melbourne. They've just got this conveyor belt of mm. good players coming from everywhere. Yeah, well, not their own it. junior system, obviously, but having bags and bags of money, mate, will give you that, unfortunately. Mm. But, um, yeah, oh, Marcy Hutchinson, sorry, Hutchinson, yeah, Hutch- there you go. Oh, no, hang on, we've been corrected again. Hutcherson, Hutcherson, what is okay. it, Battlers? We're getting conflicting, yeah, sort it out, here. Battlers. Get Let to the bottom know. of it. Come on, <laughs> got a show to run here, boys. Um, yeah, as Todd's got a big ass sombrero, but yeah, yeah. so, um. I think the battlers would agree with me. I, yeah, we can go toe to toe with them in the middle. The rest will take care of itself. I have no doubt. Yeah, I have no doubt the rest will take care of itself, particularly at home. So, yeah, their biggest for me, their biggest test yet. So, yeah, I feel like the biggest, the biggest test is going to be our um, is our second rowers. I got a feeling they're not saying that they haven't been stepping up, but I just got a feeling this is going to be their biggest biggest week yet. I feel well, man, well, KPP, man, he, KPP. He, he's been one of our like most consistent yes. players. And do you know that the I was, I was um, listening to, um, I can't remember who was talking about Kai Pierce Paul. And it, yeah, I, I agree with what they were, their sentiment they were saying is, and I think a lot of the battlers thought the same. We had this, you know, Uber X factor offload, tackle breaking kind of back rower, uh, which I think will definitely come. But at the moment, he's just a really good, gets through his work, solid runs, um, minimal errors, which is great. You know, you can build yeah. off that. It's all good to have all the the flashy stuff, but if you, you know what I mean? If you're falling off tackles, yeah. I, I've been so pleased with 
what we've seen from Kai Pierce Paul thus far. And it's only yep. going to build, man. It's only going to build. You can see it. It's it's. I swear, within the next few weeks, we're just going to start to see, you know, whether it's Brady copping an offload or KP pushing in on the inside um, for some points. So he's been he's been fucking outstanding. And Dylan oh, Lucas, absolutely, yeah. Frizzell, obviously, still a massive, massive out. But look, Dylan Lucas did a fucking sensational job last week against um, Luciano Lailu, who was an absolute fucking handful in the rain. Um, he, to me, like the, was the best best ball running player of the, of the Dragons. He always looked dangerous and did a pretty mm. solid job on him. Um, so I, I don't, I don't have any doubt, man. Lucas is just proving again. Just oh, I, yeah. can't, I can't remember a bad game. I, no. I can't remember a bad game from Dylan Lucas. So no, not at all. Um, circling back to Frizz, has there been any official word on his injury yet? I haven't seen any. If someone else has seen any, let us know. Um, does that, uh, does I, that ring alarm bells to you? Does the does the whole so. complete tear um, rumors mm. start getting stronger? I'd say so. I, th- mm. I think we're we're looking at it at least a month. At least that's yeah. probably being six, optimistic. Six weeks, six eight weeks is probably a bit closer. But look, I, I you know as as a as a bigger kick in the dick that is, I have great faith it's in like Dylan Lucas. Yeah, and yeah. what a what an opportunity for this guy! He's going to grab this with both hands. You, we, you spoke about it last year—the stuff you were seeing off, from Lucas off the field, like yeah. warming down, just doing all that stuff. So, fucking props to the guy. It's great. He's going to get his opportunity. I'm sure he's going to take with both hands. And yeah, man, that was that was that was what two years ago now, because that was back when we were doing bench warmers and not knighted. Mm. And um, yeah, he was just out there doing extra work. He was doing warm downs where everyone was heading to the sheds. Um, and this is him just being on the extended bench, mind you. He's mm. just there doing his warm downs. People are people are heading to the sheds, doing their media commitments, walking around, saying hello to fans. And mate, he was out there running, running uh, yeah. lengths of the field. So mate, he's a hard worker, Dylan Lucas, for yeah, sure. First full preseason two in in the in the in the forwards. So yeah, um, he'll be all better for it. And it, look, it, the other really good thing is even the the short. How many games has Lucas actually played? Um, um, I will open my stats. In the short amount of games, like mate, his physicality. You know, he, he's not getting, he's not getting ragdolled or, or bumped. Mm. He just seems, just seems so good in contact with him. Eleven, the ball. played eleven games. Eleven games, man. And um, yep. yeah, we saw it last week. You know, whether you know he was footy smarts, picking out, picking out the little bloke and Tyrell Sloan and and and, and aiming at him. Um. But man, he he looks good. He he is your bona fide Newcastle Knight. Yeah, said it on the Sunday show. These are the guys. Dylan Lucas is like the DNA of old. Like you had these kind of guys sprinkled throughout the team. Um, but yeah, loving what I'm seeing from Dylan Lucas. So great to see he's getting. As much as I hate seeing Frizz out, I'm I'm, I'm equally as happy to see Dylan Lucas, Lucas getting getting his chance. Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent, absolutely. But yeah, all right. Um, and also Adam Elliott too. I thought Adam Elliott was a bit of an unsung hero from last week. I, I don't think we talked about enough of Adam Elliott. I thought he did a pretty darn good job. Stats yeah. didn't jump off the page or anything, but would have been a, just a fucking shit show in the middle there for him. He did a great job. The fact that we didn't really talk about him doing it wrong. Exactly. Volume. So yeah. one of those kind of, kind he's of games. Kind of, he's kind of that mid player that you really only ever bring up if he either has a blinder like it, he did. Was it against the Cowboys? Where he, yeah, yeah, That's where he had his, his really, really, probably his, I'd almost say it was his best game of his career. Almost. I, w- I would say so, yeah. Um, you really only ever talk about Elliot when he's either played the best game he's ever played or he has an absolute shocker. That's it. Like he, when he, when he yeah. just does the basics right, like he did last week, you don't really talk about it an Adam Elliot, do you? Yeah, I guess that's the one criticism. Yeah, have of Adam Elliott. Like last year was hard because what did he have that groin injury? Yeah, definitely came in undercooked. I think he played. I think he barely he played. played the first round, did he? And then he was out for another six or so. Yeah, then when he came back, he fell off a fuck ton of tackles. He was just you could tell yeah. he it just wasn't. He was he was undercooked. He just it didn't look good. So you kind of you gave him a bit of a, a pass mark from that. He warmed into the season, but yeah, I guess there is this tendency for Adam Elliott where. He, his best and his worst is quite a bit, 
Yeah. You want to be that elite. You know, Patrick Carrigan would be the benchmark lock forward probably in the game thus far. Mm. Mate, that dude's always giving you at, at a minimum an eight and a half out of ten. Yeah. You know, he's just always Uber meters, all that stuff. So if we can start to see Adam Elliott close that gap, um, which it's definitely in him. Like he was yes. brought to the club being this super competitive forward, you know, kind of got that dog about him, like Tyson Gamble. Um, he's all about that shit, man. So yeah, hopefully we, hopefully we see another another really strong fucking game from Adam Elliott. So talking about Adam Elliott before we move on, Millie Boyle. Oh, you, I knew you were going to bring this up. <laughs> Bradman yeah. Best in the sheds after the game. That was a bit bit awkward. What was going on there? Yeah, a bit weird. I don't know. It was one of those things. It's, it's just, just a bit of a bit of a yeah. joke, but yeah. made it. It reminded me. Do you, do you remember that? It was a news presenter or something. And she was leaving the show or some shit. Oh, and our mate's gone over to give the kiss on the cheek, and she's just done the oh fuck off, get away from. Right, me. I thought you were going to the guy that was when they were reporting on the ashes like a long time ago. Do you remember that one? Where um, oh, they're talking yeah. about the, the urn from the ashes, and they're like, "Oh, how can anything so small be? How could you be impressed by something so small? so small, something like that?" And um, yeah, she just turned to him and said, "You'd know a lot about that, wouldn't you?" <laughs> and it's just like, "Holy shit!" She had that one locked and loaded. Yeah. That was ready to go. Yeah, walk into that. Yeah, uh, very good, very good. All right, let's move right along, shall we? To the Benches for either side for the Knights. Phoenix Crossan retains his 14 jersey with Daniel Siafidi, Jack Hetherington, and Matt Croker reigning at the interchange bench for the Knights with the Roosters bringing in Zach Docker Clay, White, Satili Tupanua, and Tyrell May for the Roosters. Um, mm. Completely unchanged bench. Yeah, and like. we, oh. were, we were saying last week that this is probably your best bench. I right. like this bench. I think it's. I think it's. It's a well balanced bench. It's a good mix well, of everything. Good mix. You got Crossland. We spoke about on the Sunday show. In a, you know, well, he was a half. You wouldn't say in a pinch. He's very capable of, of slipping into the halves. Mm. Very capable of. Uh, we've seen him defending at lock for for extended periods of time. He can handle it in the middle. You're not sort of watching him going. Oh, it's a bit small. He's falling off stuff. He's, you know, he's another pre, no, a, a full preseason at hooker. So. Um, yeah, yeah, that that's got was, a long way for him defending in the lock position. Yeah, with with um, Phoenix as well. I was I don't know if I mentioned it on the Sunday show, but one of the things I really enjoyed about him coming off the bench was it felt like there was more quality than quantity. You know, mm. with, with Phoenix when he's playing big minutes, and um, I'm just just looking for it here. Missed tackles. So Phoenix is leading the Knights in missed tackles. He missed seven in the first two rounds, so seven in round one, seven in round two. And then when when did Brayley come back? Um, Brayley came – so Brayley came back in round three. So this is when it starts to starts to change. So Phoenix, round one and two, seven missed tackles and then seven missed tackles. And then after that, two missed tackles, two missed tackles, and last week, zero missed tackles. Yeah. So what that is telling me is – the workload for Phoenix defensively uh, is leading to leading to missed tackles, and he's just he's preferring those smaller minutes coming on, and he's just to me he's doing like I said, quality over quantity with Phoenix. I think I think like a couple of those ones from Phoenix was more like had the mad line speed. I think he was the guy trying to push and yeah. I guess sometimes you got to pick your moments. Don't go rushing up and. That's great. You're all full of enthusiasm. You're trying to get physical and get the hit on, but the boys, yeah. the boys aren't there with you. Yeah, you might get found out and and, and get brushed. So, um, I don't think it was sort of more poor technique of that. I think sometimes you just be enthusiastic at times, but yeah, I'm I'm like trying a, a bit, uh, trying a bit yeah. hard. Yeah. But I love it. I love the fact you got a guy. Yeah, very very capable hooker. We've seen what he can do in the halves. Great fucking kicking game. Yeah, um, I think I think he's put it this way. I would much rather have Phoenix Cross as my fourteen than Connor Watson. As Connor, oh, as, as good as Connor Watson has been playing, I think Phoenix, particularly the last couple of years, has really ran it out. He's an overall more just a complete football player. Um, yeah, but yeah, um, I've got a comment here, uh, Clint. 
glad you brought this up, Clint. <clears throat> Been impressed with Hetherington this year. Seems to have his head on a bit more in terms of silly penalties and adds some enthusiasm and punch up front. Couldn't agree more, man. And offloads. Yeah. Bit of a – got a cheeky offload in him now. Good ones too, not these, you know, ones you shouldn't be pushing. They're fucking I, – I can't recall one he's fucked up yet. Um, well, he's, he's second in the Knights – at the that nice, does, uh, offloads at the moment behind that KCP. Doesn't, that doesn't surprise me at all. So yeah, yeah, he's been he's been in great injection. You're sort of you're not watching it going, oh yeah, JSAP and Leo. Once either one of those two off, you're seeing a real dip. Yeah. You know, everything's you know, the, the go forwards there, everything's still very much there once you see Heatherington get on the park. Do you remember when he was loaned to the Warriors and he just fucking went after Jared Wabri Hargreaves? Do you remember that? No. Would have been, I think it was during the COVID era. Right. Like 2020. Comment away if you remember Battlers and mate, talk about balls of steel. He's just gone. I don't give a fuck who you are. And he just absolutely went after Jared Wabri. I was almost going to put him my locket in. Hetherington just going it's after. Going for him. Yeah, 100%. I'm keeping my eye on that. I think he'll remember that shit. Um, but, yeah, he's been sensational. What a turnaround. Can't believe yeah. it. I feel bad. I feel dirty shit talking to the guy. But, you know, we live and learn battlers. That's what we're, we're, oh, we, we did. Learn. We did. There was um, last year when I took that, you know, because last year I wasn't diving as deep with the stats as I am now. Um and yeah, it wasn't until the end of the year that I compiled all the stats together and I was like, holy shit, like statistically, Heverington's mm. actually really, really good. Um, that was just like, nah, I can't believe we'll rip it on Must be because you just get like most... an idea in your head. Yeah. And I guess it's just whether it's pride or ego and you just, you run with it and you just can't be told otherwise. I don't know. Yeah. But. Yeah, glad we glad we've turned. We, we around. very much admitted we were wrong on the the Heverington front last year for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, um, Matty Croker. Um, what have we made? What have we made of Matty Croker thus far? Um, I he he's, had, he's, he's not having the. Yeah, I, I don't think he's having the start of the season that he did last year. But um, he was obviously injured. He had whatever he had going on with his teeth and jaw from that mm. trial match where he got knocked out. Um, so I don't know if that slowed his progress down a little bit and he's still getting a bit of confidence. And I, I think he's he's not playing bad football. He's obviously playing no. decent football, but I think he's he's definitely got a bit of room to improve. Yeah, I guess when you just sort of see, like, he got the jump on Lucas. Like, he's been in thereabouts a bit longer and you sort of yeah. see, like, Lucas has just grabbed it with both hands. I still really like what I see in Matty Croker. I think he's a really skillful, big-bodied player. But um, hopefully he gets some more opportunities because, um, yeah, I, I think he's a long-term prospect, Matty Croker. So, mm. all right, here we go, Battlers. The uh, the extended bench. Some big names here. Jedi Knight, Jed Cartwright, uh, Brody Jones, Tyson Gamble, Will Price, Greggy Marzu, Battlers. Greggy Marzu mm. uh, is named on the extended bench. Moving along to the Roosters, we have Egan Butcher, Murphy. I'm going to say, is it Ilo? Apologies if I butchered that one. Savala and Seo Wong, the extended bench for the Roosters. Let's just jump into the big one. Greg yep. Marzu. Um, I think our eyeballs all lit up like that meme that I put out today. When we saw he was named on the extended bench. Boy, oh boy. Um, Anari's done a commendable job. We cannot take anything away from he couldn't he couldn't have done any more battlers, but yeah, geez, he would be an absolutely massive inclusion into this team if he if he if he's fit. Yeah, I I have a weird feeling he's not gonna be fit. I am fairly certain I saw reports that he's still got a splint on his hand at the moment. Um, so I reckon it's going to be like a last minute type thing with Marzu, but I, I just have a feeling we're not going to rush him back this week. I think we'll I, see Marzu back next week. I got a funny feeling you might be right. Yeah, but hey, stranger things that happen in rugby league. Who knows? Exactly. exactly. Who knows? Um, yeah, I think it might be more there to play with the Roosters a little bit that they potentially could be dealing with a Marzu than a, a, a Jenkins. But yeah. 
I don't think so. No, no, I don't think so either. So, but yeah, there we go, battlers. That rounds out the team list for this week. Um, all right, what are we diving right into next, mate? Our key. Oh, we got the you got your coaches. Oh, coaches, not the coaches. Sorry, again, it's the uh, the master versus the apprentice. I guess in ways like Bellamy. What did he mm. do? Two two years under under Robo. Under Robo, was it? I think two years, something like, something like that. Yeah, eighteen ninety. Um, but yeah, um, Adam O'Brien with one hundred and one games with a win percentage of forty seven percent, and the Trent Robertson uh, three hundred and five games with a win percentage of sixty three. So winning one hundred ninety three and losing one hundred twelve. Referees will be Gerard Sutton. Bunker official will be Chris Butler. Yeah, I'm not a massive fan of Sutton to be honest. I don't know. Just rubs me the wrong way. Whenever I see him, um, because where I sit in the Joey stand, it's basically right in front of where the refs warm up. And no one bugs me more than Sutton for some reason. Even when he's warming up, he bugs me. I don't know why. I don't know why. You know when you just look at someone and you don't like them just from the way you Yeah. Well, it might be the Tyson Gamble effect. Chuck him in a Knights jersey. You'll fucking love the ball. No, you never know. Mm. Never know. Never know. Yeah. Very good. Um, well, we got a key matchup next, obviously. The key matchup for this yeah. week, Battlers. We have chosen Jack Cogger up against the ex knight himself, Connor Watson. Uh, Jack Cogger, 26 years of age, 176 centimeters, weighing at 90 kilos with a career of 60 games in the NRL. So you could, this isn't including Super League games. So take that with a bar of soap. 60 games uh, with four tries. With Connor Watson, 27 years of age, 177 centimetres, 89 kilos, with 128 games in the NRL with 27 tries. So um, moving along, five games for Cogger this year with four tackle breaks, 242 metres, averaging 48 metres a game, 114 tackles with a 95% tackle efficiency. Connor Watson, only the three games, managed the bag of try with four tackle breaks, 156 metres, averaging 52 metres per game, 76 tackles with a tackle efficiency of 92.7. So, yeah, Connor Watson breaking some tackles, bagging a try. Um, he's been good, man. He's been good uh, for the Roos. He's been bouncing back. Like, he's very, uh, well, what would you say, stunted with a with mm. a couple, couple of lean years there with injury. But... Yeah, he's, got to, he's going to be looking to impress. Um, you know, Sammy Walker out, then Sandor Smith, who would be their their backup. Um, he's ruled out with injury too, so he's going to be one to take taking this opportunity with both hands. Exactly, this is this is kind of a moment for him to try and slot into a position rather than just a you know he does probably doesn't want a utility slapped on him for the rest of his footy life, so. Mate, he'll be he'll be trying to shore up some sort of position in this game. And, for sure. I guess the same could be said with Jack Cogger too. Um, you know, he's yes, he certainly has been, hasn't got a mortgage on that six jersey. No. Um, again, I'm I'm really excited to see what we see from Jacko and in, in Cogger in, in in dry conditions. Uh what what's the weather meant to be like down there? Um, sunny, last I saw. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Nice fast track. So um different different to last week. Um I, I guess I haven't seen a, a lot of Connor Watson's games, but I um, imagine Jack Hogger would probably have the better kicking game of the two. Um, we spoke yeah, about part, the Sunday show. Partly cloudy. It'll be right. There you go. Very good. Yeah, good um, night for footy. The kick kick selections from Jack Hogger were just absolutely impeccable. Um, just very excited to see what we see on a dry track. If, oh, absolutely. If, yeah. If, if we could see that in the wet, um, very much see. Yeah, we saw some combinations starting to click. Spoke about that that um, the line break assist he got for uh, for KP with utilizing Dylan Lucas as a bit of a decoy. Yeah. So uh, it'd be nice to see maybe some other tricks they they got up their sleeve. So um, yeah, the key matchup for this week is Jack Cogger up against Connor Watson. Excellent. And you know what's uh, what's coming up next, don't you? The ever popular lock it in segment. So start typing away, battlers. Let's get to lock it in, shall we? Now, 
I actually had an unofficial locket in in it. It was for a uh, for OG Battler Toddy. I had Toddy locked in for the first comment, but he was beaten. He was beaten. Mick, Mick Soper got in 15 seconds ahead of Todd. I had Todd locked in for first comment. I think he was going for like five straight weeks, but he's been pipped. <laughs> so, uh, wow. Mick, Mick, you, you, you he's done you, it. You, yeah, didn't get that well done, mate. Anyway. So, uh, good on you, Mick. Got a bit of maybe a bit of a maybe a bit of a battle between Mick and Toddy for the first comment. Yep. All right. Before we get into our lock it in, uh, we're going to take this. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Hey, boys. OG Battler here since day one. You also may know me as uh, NRLW Scout Wilma or co owner of Sue's. That is me, boys. My lock it ins this weekend is Ponga for three try assists, Leo Thompson for 100 metres plus, Tuala and Marju to both score, and Dylan Lucas with a 100% tackle efficiency. I also think that the Knights will get it done 13 plus this weekend, boys, against the fucking dirty cocks. Also, on behalf of the Battlers, I've got a request. Lincoln, you absolute stunner. Any chance we can get a video of you running in slow motion with that sexy hair down at Maryland Beach? <laughs> <laughs> what a legend. Oh, what a way to kick a kick off lock it in, hey? Mate, all's forgiven after you fucking stitched me up with Wilma. But uh <laughs> good on you, mate. Good on you. What do you reckon, mate? Get me down and uh the rig's mate, looking a lot better, mate. The rig's looking a lot better for a slow Yeah, I was, I was about to that, say mate. with the whole dieting that's been happening with with the knighted lately, um, mate, I'm I'm happy to whip the camera out and uh, film you in slow motion running along Merriweather Beach next time you're down here. And all right, mm, okay, all right, let's make it happen. Might have to, might have to put that behind a paywall, mate. I'll, I'll pay for a trip to next year or something. <laughs> yeah, um, great lock it in, though. But he, he, hey, look, he's uh, he's thinking Greg is going to play, mate. He's optimistic. Mm, Do you know what? Three. The 13 plus is starting to sound a bit juicy. Mm. I'm very keen to, I'll have to have a look at the odds, yeah. Do you want to go yeah. first or do you want me to go first to lock it in this week? You go first, mate. Ladies I'll go first. first. Ladies first, you bastard. <laughs> you bastard. All right. Uh, my lock it in this week, I've gone for the Magic Express. So old Ponga Magic and the Tuala Express to link up for two tries and two try assists. So whether that's Ponga with a try assist and Anari scoring or Anari with a try assist and Ponga scoring, I think we're going to see... Well, I'd like to see that. Uh, Kalen Pong is going to continue his 100% run. He's going to continue, and he's going to kick 100%. Dan Gagai is going to make five or more tackle breaks. Jacob Safidi, I've got him for 10 or more hit-ups. Bradman Best, 40 or more post-contact meters. Knights to get their first Thursday night home win, so we're going to be one from five. We're going to get it done, and I've got the Knights 13+. plus. Is what I've got the Knights. Yeah, I like that. I'm starting to, uh, yeah, I'm vibing with that now. I really am vibing with that. I am fucking vibing with that. But uh, you mentioned here some of those. What Knights get their first Thursday night home win? What do they have here? The Knights have lost their past three Thursday night games. Well, we've lost our past four. Last four, is it? Yeah. Well, there you go. We've played four and we haven't won one. Right. However, the Knights have won eight of their past nine games at McDonald Jones Stadium. So, seems as this again hashtag breaking record season. Um, yep. Hopefully, that continues, man. So, yeah, absolutely loving so it, brother. Fun. All right, all right. Let's have, let's have a look at yours. All right, I've got Dylan Lucas for forty-five plus tackles. I think he's going to step up in the absence of Tyson Brazell and lock down that right edge. Bradman Best, anytime try scorer. I touched on it before. Uh, Brady Best scoring nine tries in the past 11 games at McDonald Jones Stadium. He's overdue. You can just see he's just itching for that fucking try. He's like, KP, I don't want to be a decoy anymore. It's not fucking using me a decoy. I want to burst over for a try. So I think Brady's overdue. Yeah, so yeah. you're saying I'm not going to get mine because Brady's going to be scoring them. So All right? he needs is one, mate. I'll be happy he just with needs one. one. Okay. I'll be happy right. with one, mate. I'll, yeah. Mate, I would love to see a thousand of those fucking golden passes, whatever you call them. Yeah. I'll be more than happy with that. What do you call it again? The Magic Express. The Magic Express. The yeah. Magic Express. Mate, I'll, I'll watch a thousand of those. No worries. Um, Kai Pierce, Paul, three plus offloads. I think we're going to start to see that a little bit. Hopefully, that combo is going to start 
coming more and more. It's get, it's getting close, Battlers. It's getting close. Um, yeah. So off one of those offloads, we're going to see Kai Pierce Ball bag a try assist. Kalen Ponga is going to keep breaking tackles. This is pretty much, I think this is be paying about a, probably suspended betting. Yeah. Three plus tackle breaks, let's be honest. It's, it's probably, it's probably it's already, already paid out. Probably, you could probably go six, to be honest. Um, Kalen Pong is going to run 200 plus run meters. I think he's going to have a fucking field day. Um, and I've got the Knights one to 12, but I can change it for you if you want. If you want to, if you want to, right here on record, change that Knights 13 plus. Fuck it. I'm going on the record 13 plus. Let's do it. All right. Let's... All right. I'll write it in my notes. Who, who was this guy that was tipping against the Knights? And here I am against a premiership heavyweight going 13 plus at Thursday, a game we, a game we never win. <laughs> Here I am, battlers. I'm redeeming myself. So, right home. We're gonna absolutely. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write it down. So on Sunday when we get to our our lock it in leaderboard, I'm on the record, mate. It's it's on the record that you've either gained one on me or dropped. No, no, because we're both gone thirteen plus. Changing on the fly, mate. Changing the fly. Um, All right. Let's let's get to the battlers lock it ins. I love these. All right, Jordan. What do you got here? Hastings Tawala KPP anytime. Oh, All right, liking that left edge. That left edge is going to be cooking. KP breaks mm. his kicking streak record. Uh, Tuala, KP, 150-plus run metres each. Ponga, two-plus try assists, three-plus Dalian points. I'm assuming you're saying for Ponga. You're going to keep that with Ponga. So, You know what? I love that Jordan has remembered that I said that if he kicks one more goal, that's the longest streak he's ever had. So mm. bonus point for Jordan for remembering that. Good on you. Good on you. Uh, Christopher, what do you got, pal? Spectacular spine. Spiky KP, spine. 250 plus meters anytime try scorer, two try assist. My God, mm. Cogger, one try assist from a kick, two line break assist. Hastings, a 40 20, three plus force dropouts, anytime try scorer also. Braley to get 40 plus tackles. 50 plus meters from dummy half and one try assist. Knights won the 12. Oh my God. Mate, I think you've been sitting up since we finished the show on Sunday to put that one together, mate. The spectacular. That's fantastic. Time. Yeah. Good. I love it. All right. What do we got here? Toddy. Toddy, the number two commenter this week, mate. I hope that fires you up, mate. So you can get it even quicker next week. <laughs> Ayatora Assault. Leo Thompson for 100 plus run meters, 60 plus post contact, 15 runs. 25 tackles, two tackle breaks, 85% tackle efficiency, one try. Knights 13 plus, hashtag, hashtag true supporter, hashtag OG battler. Yeah. Toddy, loving it, brother. I'll Love be it. Having a, mate, I'll be having a good time Thursday night, pal, if that comes off. Uh, Sal, what do you got for us, brother? Lock it in. Greg to mate, play. Mate, that lock it in's that big, almost can't see you back there, Lincoln. Yeah. Where are you, mate? Oh, there you are. There you went. <laughs> I'll just climb up the um break the play. Ponga 100 percent goal kicking Tuwala hat trick. Oh that comes off. I don't want to hear another bad word about Tuwala. That's yeah. it. That's the that's the final final nail in the coffin, and we're gonna bury the haters six feet deep. You know what? If if he scores a hat trick, I'll get a Tuwala tattoo on my left arm somewhere. Whether it's what? a whether it's a horrible stick figure with his name under it or something. No, it's going to be a. Tr- it's going to be like the Hogwarts Express train, but like Tuwala out the side. Like, fuck, man, how much money do you think I got? That will cost me thousands. <laughs> uh what have we got? Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll go into the knighted kitty and see what I can, <laughs> what I can get. Yeah, got to keep an eye on that kitty too. I've got to watch you. Um, <laughs> um, Tuwala, two hundred run meters, best long range try. I fucking love that. What yep. What was the game where he? Did he score the try? Did he set up the try? Remember, we got he got caught the ball on the full on the twenty and just sprinted it back. What game was that? That wasn't against the doggies, was it? Remember that game and he, and he just fucking nut trucked it back to the twenty. That was a home game, wasn't it? And just charged it. Or was it the Titans? Maybe that Titans game. Someone mm. will know. But yeah, um, yeah. loving that one, mate. Leo scored his first try in the second half. Knights thirteen plus Hastings anytime try score up Sal. Brother, love it. Uh, mate, the battlers are missing me, so I'm going to have to move your comment on, mate. Here I am. Uh, Knights aren't going to hose down the visitors' dressing sheds now. They're going to be hosing down the ground. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good Good point. Turn on the get sprinklers those, get those sprinklers pumping just before kickoff. Lock it in. The Knights upgraded McDonald Jones Stadium's irrigation system. So Yeah. Get, All get our the- fans. Oh, that's what we could organize. All the fans have to go and buy a couple of bottles of water before the game as well. 
yes. and then just all go down to the fence and just start splashing yes. the water everywhere. We'll we'll get the field nice and wet. Water bombs, water bombs. Water, like water, oh yeah, water bombs. Water bombs. I actually know. We'll get one of those fucking helicopters that they used to put out bushfires. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> pound the <laughs> fucking <laughs> earth with that. What was it? Not Hercules. What was the name of that that chopper? What was it called? I can't remember. Don't know. Was it Hercules? Who, oh, who knows? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, let's uh go fund me. We'll get one of those helicopters. They won't be cheap, but it'll be well worth it, Batless. You know what? Uh, I, I'm just going to bring Lockie. Sorry, I just want to bring uh, Lockie Drummond's comment up. I like this one. Get Thomas the tank engine, but with Tuala's face on the front. <laughs> I I would do that. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah, yeah. If if, if Tuala scores a hat trick, I'll get that tattoo, mate. Lock that in. Nice. Lock it in. Very good. Uh, William, what do you got for us, brother? You got Ponga, Tuala, and Lucas anytime try scorers. KPP with two plus offloads, Knights 13 plus. They can smell blood in the water, mate. They can smell blood in the water. Mm. Um, what do we got here? Adrian, lock it in our spine. All have a try assist each. Jaden Bradley will make a f- make fiddly tackles minimum. Fiddy. Fiddly. Fuck's sake. <laughs> we'll make fiddy tackles. Sorry, I didn't get you. I hope he doesn't make fiddly tackles. That'd be a yeah. lot of missed tackles coming off fiddly tackles. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, fiddly, he's just fiddling with them in the tackles maybe. Maybe that's what he meant. Who knows? Mm. Um, fiddy tackles minimum. We all we will win uh, the meters battle. Anari will score a try and Knights one. I'm going to say one to 12. I don't think you're going to say one to two. Maybe, maybe he's flying close to the sun. Actually, yeah. how the fuck would you win a game one to two? You can't. I don't know. Anyways, well, while um while we're on Adrian, I'm just going to bring this up so we can lock this in as well. Um, if Anari does get the hat trick, Adrian's going to pay for my tattoo. There you go. Oh, you it's, go. Uh, it's going to be a big fucking back one, Adrian. So. A big back piece <laughs> that wraps around, and there's gets just like a train line maybe across the head or around the neck or something. Just get Anari's face tattooed on my face. That'll work. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Um. Paul, what do you got for us, brother? 15 plus battlers for Thursday night. No, 15,000. I hope it's more than 15. 15,000, sorry. Battlers for Thursday night. Jack Cogger, one try, two try assists, and KP a try. Knights 13 plus. Mate, Paul, uh, after Paul after the, um, the 9,000 that turned up in the rain the other week and, and the rest of us that didn't turn up either, you know, due to feeling a bit crook or – Scared of the rain or whatever reasons, uh, train lines closed, whatever. They're all going to have, you know, fear of missing out from the game last week. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a it's a big crowd number. Surely. What are they average yeah. usually on a Thursday? Oh, that's a good one, mate. I can I can find it for you. Pigeon a Pigeon. Sunday. I'll, I'll find it for you. For, well, I've only got to look at you know four games. It's not that hard. But yeah, true, mate. Yeah, I reckon we'll do fifteen k easy. I think so. I think, I think so. it'll be closer to twenty. Comment away, actually, while we're on that, members count. Have we cracked 30? I want to know. If someone knows, I know we're sitting on 29, I think, a week or so ago, someone mentioned. So That's right, 29. You know, battlers, or if someone can quickly Google it, let us know what the uh, the membership yeah. counts up to. Um, Lockie Tipper, who have you got scoring four tries, mate? Probably Adam O'Brien. Um, lock it in. Get out tears, of town. Tears of Roosters. Fin. My, is this Lockie Tipper? Who's hacked Lockie's account? No That's, four Lockie Tipper, if you're in trouble... Um, just do like four dots. Are you okay, mate? Let us know. Don't blink twice because we won't know. I was about um, to say blink, blink, don't. blink four times, but we wouldn't see it. We won't know. Uh, Knights 13 plus. Hastings, two tries. Best scores, two tries off KPP. Fuck, I hope that happens. Epic offload. And for my mother to cry herself to sleep after the match. Oh, oh mother. Mm. Okay. I'm, I, I'm hoping that your mother's a Roosters supporter. If not, that's a bit. Um, yeah. That's a bit weird, but <laughs> <laughs> just uh, randomly want your mother to cry herself to sleep. Yeah. Um, Dylan, what do you got for us, mate? Backline to run riot to Walla for a Hattie. Oh, yes. a, it's a, picking a, up momentum. A uh, a Taddy for a Hattie. Um, Brady, one try and a try assist. KP, two try assist and a try. Three Dalian points and a 100% conversion. So yep. very good. Very good. And I love everyone jumping on the conversions with me. It's great. Mate, you've started a movement here. Justin, mm. OG, lock it in. Tawala Magic Tawala Magic Round. 200 plus meters, three tries, four tries. 
Knights 20 plus. If he gets that, mate, he gets 10 fucking Dalian points, all right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just gets the Dalian medal now. Just, just give it to him. Back just to hand back. it to him. Give it to him now. Um, <laughs> excellent. Excellent. And what do we got here? Sorry. Cameron's done the uh, the Lord's work. Still at 29,479. So we're getting there. Oh, I reckon oh. lock it in. We're going to get 30. We're going to get 30. It's going to happen. Oh, it, we've got to. Because yeah. they, they towards the end of the year, they start pumping like the three-game membership ships and stuff. So we'll easily crack 30 by the end of the year. Bump what up. do you mean before before Thursday or something? What are you? Oh, thinking? no, just we'll do it before the end of the season. Easy. Oh, okay. Yeah, Piss easy. Easy. Uh, sorry, Lockie here is confirming. Uh, boys, I've got to rest after stalking Joey Johns. I thought <laughs> it was Jack Johns. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think of that. Of course you did. Yeah. Does your parole officer know that you um you're on this too? <laughs> you might be violating your parole conditions being on a on a uh, on a, on nice a live show, stream. Mate. Yeah, mm. you might want to check with your parole officer there, Lockie. Nah, good stuff, mate. Good stuff. Great lock it ins. I'm that was fantastic. Alive. I yeah. love lock it in. It's you've, you've swayed me, battlers. I'm, I'm jumping on the 13. Plus. I'd be I would be disappointed in myself if I didn't jump on that 13 plus bandwagon. So I'm glad we could all do that together. Yeah. Um, all right, that's enough of the lock in. Let's take a look at the punt club, the ever exclusive punt club, shall we? All right, mate, who have we got? Um, the old top five. Geez, these blokes just think they're just going to stay there. It's Eddie yeah, Walker it's and, not and Mark, much, is it? Mm. Mark M. Um, killing it. 33 points each. Delamere, he's, uh, they're sitting at third. Uh, Nixon, there's a new one. That Come is in a new one. Fourth, charging up the ranks. Uh, and Oscar, yeah, charging. sitting up in fifth. So well done, guys. Well done. How many have we got in the punk club? Seems to be fucking Mate, good. last time I checked, it was over, like it was close to 900 or something. God damn. It's a lot. It's kind of disappointing that... I was kind of hoping that this top five would be dominated by like reg- by regular punters that we see on here, and we could be like, "Oh, fucking good on you, Lockie Tippy, you're coming first, and Lockie Drummond's in there." It just would have would have made for a really good segment, but it's full of these people I've never heard of. But you know, just taking out goddamn, bring it down, yeah. bastards. <laughs> uh, Eight hundred eighty nine. Mm. Thanks. There Carly. you go, Dylan. Yeah, I thought it was close to close to nine hundred. Who needs a producer, mate? When you got when you got the battlers, mm. in for who needs who needs Storky when you've got the battlers? All mm. all of you battlers, you make up for for him. Very good, Don't very tell good. No, nah. um, <laughs> love you, Storky. All right, mate. Um, all right, you can let's... go first. Oh, they will. We're going back to lock it ins. Love it that much. We'll go back to lock it ins. There it is. Uh, and here we go. I do have the knights. Hashtag true supporter. Um, besting the Roosters. I got the Storm too good for the Bulldogs. Broncos, unfortunately, I do have over the Dolphins. There's just fuck. There was so many key injuries to the Dolphins. Unfortunately, uh, the Warriors. They have just love seeing the. I love the Warriors supporters. Yeah, as hard as that loss was at the end of the year, it, it was easier. It was against the Warriors. I fucking love Warriors yeah. supporters. If they're fucking the best, Mate, second into... second best. So us, of course, but they're great. They I love that episode. Like the views on that episode last year went skyrocketing because it got shared around. Like the you know the guy that does the shoey up in yeah. front of the coach's box, he shared it around. the The guy who dresses up as the Joker, he was sharing it around and stuff. And we're getting so many good. You know, I think it's our most viewed episode comments. on YouTube. They were got yeah. smashed. Yeah, that was a good. It was, one. it was great. Good on your Warriors supporters. Um, there is no way on God's green earth I tip the Rabbitohs. Surely no. not. You didn't. That's what's black. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, what am I doing? So I'm jumping sides here. Sorry. My bad, Battlers. I've got the Cowboys beating the Eels. Um, yeah, without Mitchie Moses, they're not looking too crash up the Eels. Mm. Uh, Sharkies, lock it in. Jason Demetrio, first coach sack. They look. Jack White, like, as, as you all know, oh, brother, is, is a diehard Raider supporter. <laughs> and he yeah. is just loving the fact that Jack White's just jumped out of the frying pan and into the fire with bloody the Rabbitohs. Mm. Imagine, ta- imagine you could have stayed a one club pl- player, get paid more money, and stay in a very, very competitive team to take Top unders, yeah. to go in a comp, and it's just a fucking dumpster fire. My God, be regretting that decision. Um, the West Tigers, 
I think it's the first time I've tipped the West Tigers. Mate, they are, you know, I know we lay the boot and it's a bit of fun, but, you know, great supporters. Good to see them. Good to see them competitive again, let's be honest. Yeah. It feels like forever since that was the case. Uh, and I'm never going to tip the Titans. They are just <laughs> hopeless. Uh, the Raiders, they're very good. They're, they're looking very, very good. So uh, they're my yeah. tip for this week. Mate, mine are exactly the same, so I'm not even going to dive into this too much. Hashtag true supporter, Knights over the Roosters, Storm over the Bulldogs, Broncos over the Dolphins, Warriors over the Seagulls, Cowboys over the Eels, Sharks over the Rabbits, West Tigers over the Dragons, and Raiders over the Titans as well. So I'm I'm exactly the same as you. Um, so, yeah, so we're not going to see a change in that this in our, in our little leaderboard between you and I this week. Um, obviously tipping the same people. Mm. We're not we're not gonna see a change in that. But anyway. Very good. Very good. Well, battlers, that special time of night where you just fill with those burning questions and we're gonna extinguish them all as best well, we got as out of out of their leg first. Oh fuck man, I am so out of form. So... <laughs> mate, that night uh, shift killed you, hasn't it? Mate, in Storky, it's just been a culmination. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm jumping ahead of myself. My God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm out of form. Bit of rust. I might get dropped. Who knows? Who know? You might have someone else here next week, and I'm just going to... Who's 18th man? Hey. Storky? Get Storky back on the phone. Yeah. Who's the 18th man? Yeah, get a call up. Try and get mm. him out of that Roosters contract he signed with that other podcast. Uh, <laughs> only kidding. Love you, Storky. Uh, out of their league. Let's do it, guys. It's back-to-back premierships. All right, Battlers. Um, interesting out of their league this week. The Lisa, we're into the into the finals for the um, what you'd call them the um, representative teams. Uh, Lisa Fiola Cup finals week one against the Eels at Leichhardt Oval, for Sydney. Well, Leichhardt Saturday at one thirty p.m. The Knights currently were sitting six at the end of the season. Rab- uh, the Eels, Rabbitohs. Eels third. That game is on New South Wales Rugby League TV, so you can watch that one. Tasha Gale Cup Finals Week 1 against the Seagulls, also at Leichhardt Oval, Saturday 3 p.m. The Knights finish the season in fifth. Seagulls fourth. That game is also on New South Wales Rugby League TV. Um, SG Ball Finals Week 1. We keep rattling on about how good this SG Ball side is. Tune in to New South Wales Rugby League TV and check them out for yourself. They take on the Steelers at Leichhardt Oval at 4.45 p.m. Um, the Knights finish the season in third and the Steelers at six. And then we move on to our, um, I guess, what do you call them? Uh, Jersey flag. Anyway. Jersey flag Knights side take on the Roosters at the Newcastle Centre of Excellence. So head along there um, Sunday at 1 p.m. and watch that game. And then New South Wales Cup, obviously the curtain raiser to the NRL game on Thursday night. If you can't head to the game, it's also going to be on New South Wales Rugby League TV. So, mate, if you if you sign up, if you haven't signed up for that yet, sign up for your free 14 day trial. There's so many nights games to watch. This week on New South Wales Rugby League TV, don't do a Lincoln and watch a game from last year. Yes, thinking it's this year's though. Don't don't do that. Um, so yeah, the Knights taking on the Roosters at five twenty p.m. So I would imagine gates probably open at five, maybe like five past five. They like to do this weird fifteen minute thing before kickoff. So um, yeah, get in there nice and early and watch New South Wales Cup. I want to bring up a comment here from uh, Lockie. I had a feeling he was going to do this. I was asking whether or not they could do this after heading back, heading up to the bigger grades, but there you go. Yeah. Wilson DeCourcy has gone back to SG Ball to play their finals campaign. It will be a big boost and worth watching on New South Wales Absolutely. TV yep. for everyone. A special crop of talent is brewing. So it's, do you know what I'm, I'm loving? Is, is now there's starting to be this little bit of a culture building around it's cool to watch junior grades. And I think it's yes. just, with the streaming service and that, it's starting. And we're going to try and do our very best battlers to pump it up, know, pump it up as much as we can, um, get that spotlight put on some of these kids coming through. Because, um, you know, how, how much different is it just seeing, even from a few years ago, being you either couldn't watch trials footy or you had to watch them on the bloody NRL app on your phone to now they're, they're kind of a big thing, you mm. know, 
you know, the, the viewership was massive for the trials. And I think you're going to start to see that trickle in with the SG balls. It's just, it's not yes. going to be the back of people's minds anymore. You're going to, yeah, you're going to start talking about these young prospects coming through. So absolutely. Um, if there's any, if there's anything th that we can do as far as like, yeah, um, you want to see more from the out of, out of the league segments or, if you want us to do a little bit of a deep dive on a player or two, yeah, just dive in a bit deeper. We let us can. let us know because yeah, we are really trying to to put some spotlight on some of these um, guys and girls. You know the Tasha Gal and Lisa Fiola Cup as well. So um, yeah, absolutely. All right, um, now now we can move along to extinguishing your burning questions, battlers. So start typing away. Let's do it. All right. All right, this is where we're going to start. We're going to start here. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Hey, boys and girls. I think we get, should get rid of the, uh, the Sofidi brothers and um, and hook up uh, Leo's, Leo's brother to take on the front line. What do you reckon? Shit. Get rid of the Sofidis and... Get Leo's brother. Big mm. call, man. Big call. Um, massive yeah, call. Massive call. Is, is it Leo's? No, they're twins, eh? They're, they're twins. twins. Yeah. It's taken five years in the in the rugby league system for Leo to get to where he is now. So unless this guy isn't a freak. Yeah, and he can just. Come across in one preseason or whatever and, and, and be where Leo is. I highly doubt it. Certainly not going to be, I don't think, to where the SAFs are. Look, I think, and, 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 it, and it's fair criticism. It's fair criticism. We know what the Safidis are capable of. Mm. You want to see week in, week out. They sort of, we've taught, it's the seesaw. When one's high, one's low, they, 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 they play rep and then they kind of fall off. It's just, it's like any great football player. If you want to be that elite tier, like your Payne Haas, your... Adam Fanua, Blake, uh, we touched on before, uh, Paddy Carrigan, um, you know, who are the um, – James Fisher-Harris, Moses Leota, those kind of caliber players, it's consistency. It's consistency. And, um, yeah, I guess that's the biggest criticism. And it's unfortunate because we know what they're capable of. They're some of the biggest bodies in the game. What are they, like 128 kegs each? Mm. Big boys. Got two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mate, there's no reason why we can't have all four. Because isn't uh, – what was the – didn't they bring in some sort of incentive to get players over from rugby? What was what was the go with that? Probably. That? I wouldn't mind – yeah, of course, um, for Andy would be going, yeah, let's do anything to try and – I'm sure there was an incentive, and that's why you're seeing, like, the Roosters signed old mate. Um, we started looking at Leo's brother. I'm sure there's an incentive to get people mm. over here from rugby. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, there you yeah. go. Lockie I would. Drummond. Lockie Drummond's done, you know, a typical Lockie Drummond and just coming through with the gold. There you go. So, look, yeah, don't go throwing the baby out with the bathwater, mate. These, yeah. The saps are still good. They, 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 yeah, it's just you, um, I guess we know what their ceiling is and they just need to find that consistency because it's getting to the point now where, you know, when did they debut? 2016? The Saths, yeah. And they're starting, they should be starting. It would have been too early, so you're probably right. How old are they? Like 20, what, 8? 20, I was going to say 26, 27. 26, 27. So they're, they're starting to get into their their prime years. So I'm hoping, mate, like it's still too early for me to say. I don't think they're playing terribly. Um, you know, I think the, the first game against the Raiders, they just got – and it, they, they were up against an elite forward pack in Papali and, and – uh, Tarpane and and Co. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't. I, I'm not down the saps. I haven't yeah. seen enough to go. Nah, we got to. They got to get out of here now. They just. Yeah. And on top of that, there just isn't that an abundance of quality big boys. I guarantee you, mate. If they came in the open market, there's what twelve 
to 15 other clubs that would snap them up in a heartbeat. So absolutely, yeah. yeah. All right, let's let's move on to the next one. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Hey boys, day one, OG Battler here. Uh, I got a very good question for you boys, and it is: Do the Knights go hard for Sirona Truva from Penrith, especially due to Gagai being at the back end of his career? A back line like Ponga, Best, Maju, Truva, and Gagai or Tuava, whoever meets the criteria, sounds pretty fucking scary, boys, to play against. And I tell you what, it provides a lot of go forward. So when our in- inconsistent boys in the front row, they uh, they're off. We still have plenty of go forward with that back line. Um, and when they're on, Jesus Christ, try to stop us. I reckon it would be fucking absolutely crazy not to go for Truva. Yeah, I imagine there's probably a lot of people lining up to get his signature. Oh, uh, yeah. He's uh, one of the most – of all the off-contract players, he's right at the tippity-top of the list of one of the most wanted. Uh, what have I got here? 34 appearances thus far, 19 tries. Yeah, All right. right. Yeah. Um, already this season, five appearances, six tries. Five line breaks, 20, uh, 17 tackle breaks, um, 21 tackles made, six miss, 77.8% tackle efficiency, averaging 147 run meters per game. Yeah, he's a he's fucking strong. In well, how old is he? How old is this kid? Um, born 2002. So what's that? He's quick Don't math. Do math. 22? 22. I think, yes, mm. twenty-two. So, um, yeah, I certainly wouldn't say no, mate. I, he's yeah, he looks fucking good. He looks good. Um, and the good thing with these Pan- Panthers players is that they don't seem to fall off when they're plucked out of the system. I know the doggies guys. Like, I guess you had kick out on that they had injury and and Matty Burton, but they seem to have bounced back in that. They're in some pretty pretty bad teams, I guess, but. Shit, I wouldn't. Uh, I'd like to see Taruva in a Knights jersey on that back line. Mm. Got to admit, yeah, makes me uh, makes me a bit toey thinking about it. <laughs> Just like to see his, his price about wet grounds. Mm. Mm. I like to see his price tag. It all, it all comes down to price, brother. I wouldn't go yeah. breaking the bank for the guy, but. Yeah, mate, just your your deep voice talking about him. You got me toey thinking about him, mate. The deep, so, oh, uh, the deep voices won him yeah. over. Oh yeah. All right, let's let's move on to one from uh good old Todd. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Hey Battlers, Todd Punya here. Do you think with Frizzell having his hamstring strain, it would be a good idea for him to rule himself out of origin like Ponga did? And focus on his career best form with the Knights. Absolutely. Great question, Toddy. Absolutely. That was better than Tiger Life, that question, mate. Good stuff. You take that back. Hey. Well, they're both I just don't... as good as each other, actually. Mm. That that was a Tiger Loaf question. Fucking oath. That was a Tiger mm. Loaf question. Yep. Yeah. I that's a yeah, I, I I agree. I agree. Um Hammies is something you don't want to fuck with at all. I remember, remember, like I was staunch against Brady backing up from Origin, mm. um, playing his first Origin quickly backing up because I was so afraid of the soft tissuey stuff and that. But yeah, I think so. But I definitely think he was on Madge's radar. He fuck, he looked good, Brand. He was, yeah, he was cooking. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, who do you think? Who do you think's in the mix for back rowers this year? Surely got that. Olukawatu, he's in the mix. I'm trying to think off the top of the dome now. I've fucking put mm. myself on the spot here, but um, you have. But Todd, yeah, mate, I, I think he's uh, even for game two or three. I think, I think he'll just because what's it now? He, he's getting towards what's he? He's only got he's off contract. When sorry, he's got um twenty five. He's got in his favour for next year, so we yeah. can either take it or or leave it. Um. Yeah, because I remember when he signed his quotes where he wanted to go to a club that could win a comp, which was like a massive compliment at the time. What was that? Twenty twenty one, I think that came out. 
Um, yeah, so he wants to win a comp, brother. So he'll be putting. He's he's a kind of guy that strikes me as club first mentality kind of dude. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think he will, brother. I think he will, mate. But yeah, fucking tiger life question that one, mate. Love it. All right, next one. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Hey guys, Joss at band practice, but thought I'd send in a message. How likely do we think Greg Marzu is to returning this week? And are we all hoping he's going to play next to Gagai? The old band practice, good old days. Yeah, they were good old days, weren't they? Oh, mm. wild old days. I don't know if there was much practicing going on in my band, to tell you that much. But mm. um, Greggy, I don't know. It's – um. The, it, it's a I don't know I, I'm, I'm no wrist expert whatsoever. Yeah, I feel like that's an injury you could come back from far quicker than say an ankle or a knee or. Well, wasn't wasn't it a um a problem with there was a bone that wasn't getting enough of blood supply, so they had to put in, I don't know I'm no medical expert they had to put something in so he, the bone would get more blood. I'm pretty right. sure. Pretty sure it was some something along those lines. So it wasn't actually like a break or a fracture. It was a, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just, I just feel like you wouldn't wouldn't risk risk it this week. Like we were saying a little bit earlier, I don't think I don't think we will. I think we'll see one more week of him on the sideline, and then he'll come in coming next week. Mm. Um, but as you know, the second part of that question, would we like to see him next to Gags? I would. Hundred percent. I'd rather see him on the right hand side and Tuala on the left. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm a part of the converter now. Comment away, battlers. But I think I think Anari on the left's looking yeah. pr- pretty special at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Got to leave this Magic Express where it is. All right, we'll move on to the last one. What would you think about Newcastle trying to sign Big Nas from the Storm as he's kind of on the outer with? belly ache and stuff at least that'll give us a big boy in the middle and kind of shore up that middle signing big nuss yes big, or no big nasty yeah I, yeah i'd take big nasty oh, i'd take him in heartbeat yeah absolutely yeah he's a gun he's that he's that big bopper that we've been talking about for a long time so is there from, is there a bigger bopper than him i wouldn't think so I'd think he would be the biggest, biggest of the boppers. Yeah, I still mm-hmm. remember seeing a picture of it was it was a, a photo taken of Ezra Mam, the back of Ezra Mam, and it's just a charging Nelson Asafa Solomona, and it looked like a fucking child trying to tackle a giant. <laughs> I'm like, fuck that, David <laughs> versus Goliath kind of shit. Kind of shit, yeah. I met him. I actually did meet him. Remember that infamous when I I, I got roasted because I attended the. Uh, Ah, yeah, the storm. members of it. Yep, they had him and Curtis Scott come up, and we were comparing height because he he's a he is a bee's dick taller than I am. He's about two, oh, a little over two hundred centimeters or something like. Um, so fucking big unit, man. Fucking massive. Um, I think any big quality representative level footballer that comes on the market, like the props, mate. Everyone, even if they're in a bit of down form, someone's going to take a risk on a man because the upside's just too good. It's just way too good. Is he on the outer with bellyache? Is that why he's playing New South Wales? Uh, yeah, New South Wales. Cup? I don't. Yeah, I don't know. That's the scenes reported. Did he? He came in a bit unfit, or because he, 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 he didn't play in the trial, did he? He didn't play no, in the trial against us because he was. Everyone was talking about his drip. He had these yeah fancy ass sunnies on and. The big wearing wearing like a big, big, tr- big chain or something. Um, Lion shirt or some shit on the sideline. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Is he, is he on the outer in Melbourne? Because that would be a good pickup. Yeah, bloody oath. Yeah, he's running around. It looks weird seeing him in the um, in a Bears jersey. Bears jersey. Yeah, mm. it does look fucking cool. The Bears colours, eh? When you see that, it does. Yeah, yeah, uh, um, yeah. I think, I think, yeah. So, what would you? F- when you say that, though, if you do go, if you were to get him, what happens to your bench then? So what do you have? Yeah, unfortunately, your Matty, Matty Croker would be dropping off, wouldn't he? Yeah. 
Yeah. And you'd have Nass, Heverington, um, DSAF, and Phoenix. Mm. It's not a bad bench. I guess it just depends on – he's already got the premiership, right? So – I imagine he's the kind of like now you'd be going, well, I need the big if you are gonna leave, you're gonna go for the big contract. You're gonna go yeah. go yeah. to West for big bucks or uh, drag. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw a big contract at him, to be honest. Nah, nah. He's not, you know. No. Nah. Yeah. But yeah. Great questions, guys. Good question. Love, love being put on the spot too. It's good. Yeah. It's good stuff. Now, we do have some pinned one here. We're not forgetting you battlers that are sitting here. Nah, hand thing. it over to the battlers. Well, I, the battlers. Typing away. Um, here's one for you, mate. Question. Uh, did you guys manage to watch any of the WrestleMania 40? I did. I watched both nights as good. Yeah. As a wrestling fan, it was um one of the best WrestleManias I've seen in a very long time. Especially especially the end of night two. Yeah. Uh Christopher Wilson. Hey guys, with Thompson and Lucas able to negotiate with rival clubs from November one, should the Knights make them a priority signing? Absolutely. absolutely fucking yeah. absolutely. yes thompson's easily our best through the middle i believe um and lucas is what top three edge so mate they've got to be absolutely got to be priority re-signings yeah 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 without a doubt we said that um surely surely there's gonna have to start being some buzz about contract extension talks yeah right yeah have to be have to be um let's take a look back let's sorry i've uh i was too preoccupied listening to these quality questions if i can see did i miss any other questions mate did i miss any others um, sorry i haven't i i wasn't uh going through this is this is Storky's bread and butter, guys. Um, um, Dylan, Dylan's got one. Do they do American sports like NFL have salary caps like we do in the NRL? They do. They're just fucking enormous. They're just massive, like two hundred and seventy-five million or something like that. Something massive like that. Um, I know the Philadelphia Eagles still have about twenty million to play with, which is. Insane because it's not a whole lot of a salary cap, but when you look at what's the NRL salary cap, 12 or something, is it, or has it gone up? Um, so, you know, when when your NFL is talking about a team only having 20 million left to play with and it's more than ours, it's ridiculous. I'm starting Crazy. to get more and more into the EPL. And um, so I, I picked a lot of the coin over there too. I picked a good time to jump on the um the really I haven't jumped on the bandwagon. I've always been a Newcastle United supporter. Yeah. Um, like Man City were bought out by um, I, I can't remember. They went Saudi. I think they were Saudis. Um, anyways, they were bought out by some rich consortium. Anyways, and then Newcastle United's been bought out by this Saudi like fucking billions of dollars. So they're having parties over in Newcastle in England, just going, yes. So it's weird. It's kind of like, I don't know how I feel about it because it's so like, you know, rich owners dictate kind of, I don't know, how successful your club is. It, I, yeah. I There's a massive disparity, but I guess you kind of get used to that over there. Because um, like, what was that fucking, is it, uh, I can't pronounce your name, is it M M Mbappe? M and Beppe, that million billion the dollar Saudi, contract? Yeah, the Saudi um billion dollar contract. I'd, like yeah. That's insane. Insane, insane, insane money. Humanity. And then what's the go to? Do you know the NBA? Yeah. They they got like a royalty tax, don't they? So you can exceed it, but don't you get like slammed? Like you get a cap, but then if you exceed or something, is, I remember hearing something about like a, a like a loyalty tax, like a tariff or a tax or I'm not sure. I don't there's know. Some, I swear there's something. One of the battlers would know. I'll, to, I'll do some research on it a bit. Yeah. So one of my mates Come who back was, to us um, with that one. Yeah, there was one of my mates who was commenting on uh telling me about it. And he was like, Yeah, some you can't just go out and just buy shit love. Well, you can, but you get slugged. I don't know, the owners get charged. Right, you get shit, get pinned shitload and stuff, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, uh, Carly. Play, take this last one here from Carly. Do you see David Armstrong? Getting a go in first grade this season. 
Ooh. Seems to be a guy on a lot of lips. A lot of the content we've been putting out, uh, Davy Davy Armstrong's name's getting thrown around quite a bit. So um, he sort of he had a bit of a mixed bag on the wing, didn't he, in the trials? Yeah, and then he was playing wing in cup, and um, he was it wasn't wasn't playing too well, and they put him back to fullback, which is his preferred position. Um. And then now he's back on the wing again because Fletch Sharp wasn't playing in that game. Um, but yeah, I I still see Fletcher Sharp as the better player than David Armstrong. So for me, he's sitting behind Fletch Fletch Sharp. And you got um, that um, M- Moth and Drecky too. And Moth and Drecky. Yeah, I I don't think so. I don't think we'll see Armstrong getting a run in first grade this season, even if. Even if we lose both wingers, I feel like Jenkins and Fletch Sharp would come in before David Armstrong, hmm. or Moth and Drecky and Sharp, or you still got like Mapapalangi too. You got Mapapalangi as well. Yeah, I just no. I, yeah, I don't see David Armstrong coming in anytime soon. He's a guy I could see someone sniping. Yeah, because he's got a he's got a few in front of him. Especially since we extended Sharp and, and, and promoted him in the top thirty, mm. so mm, watch the space. It's 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 one thing we do have an abundance of is bloody fullbacks at the moment. Actually, Absolutely, stack yeah. with them, stack with them. But there you go. Well, great show, Battlers. That was great. That was awesome. Loving it, loving it. And as always, please, the Knighted Hotline is always open. Easiest way, just jump on our website, thenighted.com.au. Any t- if you can't sleep at night, if you're if you if you're sitting there having dreams, you have an epiphany, you have the best idea in the world, record that shit, send it through to us. All right, send it through to us, whatever it may be. Even if it's halfway through the game, if you're halfway through the game, we would love to hear some stuff on the fly. Oh all yeah, right? that'd be cool. Yeah. And then if you do want to retract that statement, just go, hey, sorry, I take that back, and we won't. All is forgiven. You know, <laughs> sometimes when, when emotions are high, intelligence is low. I understand that. I do it all the time. Don't worry. So, yeah, the United Hotline open 24-7. All right, for all the listeners on Spotify or wherever it is at the moment, jump across to the website, send us in a voicemail. So Sunday night we'll be listening to more of those. So get them in. Get them in. We'll, we'll get the best ones out. But, yeah, mate, cue the music. Let's do this. If you can, please like, follow, subscribe, share all the good stuff, guys. We're a bee stick of 20,000 on Facebook. Climbing, climbing on Instagram. We're getting closer and closer to the 7K on that one too. Huge shout out to the boys at LGB Marine. Support the sponsors that support us. Without them, we can't be doing what we're doing. But that is it for us tonight. Don't just have a good night. Have a Newcastle night. Join the Knighted community at thenighted.com.au and on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Knighted Podcast. Until next time. Good night.